Good morning from Louisville, Kentucky. We are uh, out in Eastern Cemetery this morning. This is, this is apparently one of the most corrupt cemeteries in the country. We're out with Atlas Preservation today on their 48 state tour. There's something like 16,000 plots out here, but there's over 100,000 burials. Nobody seems to claim ownership of this property. The monuments that are out here are gorgeous. Uh, we are gonna work on a number of them today and then help get some of the volunteers in the area trained to be able to do this on their own uh, to help bring this cemetery back. I'm with uh, Stephanie Buzan. She is with the Friends of Eastern Cemetery. She's been volunteering with this group for a number of years now, and they're really leading the preservation effort of this cemetery. And you can see behind us that we're walking through some pretty tall grass. There is, I think she said, just shy of 30 acres in this cemetery. You got it. Stephanie, tell me a little bit about what your organization is doing to preserve this. Is anybody claiming ownership of this cemetery, or what are the, what's going on with that? Nobody does claim ownership of the cemetery. It's been abandoned for a number of years, and Andy Harpole, who is the president of our volunteer yeah. group, he decided one day that something just needed to be done about it, and yeah. he got on his lawnmower and came out here and started mowing grass. <laughs> he got on social media and started recruiting some friends and people from the community and the Friends of Eastern Cemetery was born. That was around 2013. You've got some really beautiful. Oh, there's some incredible. Beautiful. Out I here. mean guys look at the, look at this. You've got some really, really beautiful that's um, ornate carving in that. That's a really gorgeous stone. And there's a lot of stones around here that are massive, which makes the which makes the restoration efforts a lot more challenging for you all because this is not easy work. So what we have here is a uh, thin marble headstone. Looks like a limestone pretty typical um, for this era. And they used limestone bases or locally available materials, sometimes sandstone, because it was um, less expensive, easy to carve. How many folks do you have that come out in a given year? Every Sunday, we're out here mowing grass yeah. from 10 until 2, and we invite anyone to come out and join us <laughs> mow grass because, as you can see, we need a lot of help. Well, so if you're in Louisville and want to mow, mow grass, if you're, uh, you guys like lawn care. Uh, and, and we've got equipment for you and everything you need to know and need to use to cut grass. We've got it out here at Eastern Cemetery, and we're here on every Sunday from 10 to 2 as long as the weather permits. That's amazing. Other things that we do to try to preserve the cemetery, there is some really rich history here in the cemetery. Yeah. And there are a lot of folks that are buried here that have unique stories. And some of them are prominent, famous people that are buried here. Uh -huh. And others are people just like me. Yeah. But their stories should be told too. So a couple of things that we do during Women's History Month and Black History Month is on our social media pages, we research and write biographies on women and African Americans that are buried here in the cemetery, uh -huh. and we do daily posts about those people. Amazing. And we have gotten a really neat response to that program. Like everyone has a story and it's just so cool to be able to tell that and it's it's unfortunate that you've got a situation where you've essentially have an abandoned cemetery of this size but clearly when this cemetery was put together although there was certainly ripe corruption that was taking place there was a lot of money uh, the stones that we're looking at something like this that's an expensive stone regardless of the era so folks like that would have definitely had plenty of money to be investing or felt really important their family member was very important to them to have have a monument like that or even over here behind me here there's a there's a few more but just the intricate carving work adds a lot of expense to these stones his name is washington spragling and he was an african-american slave that was um, freed and throughout his life he worked to free other slaves he would pay for their freedom and he was very wealthy he was a barber 
and then he started doing land investment or real estate investment. So the stone immediately in front of us? Yes. Wow. He spent his life helping other African Americans to purchase their freedom. He was a very wealthy man, and at the time of his death, there was an article, and I'm, I'm trying to think, I, I believe it was in the Chicago Times yeah. or the New York Times, but the headline of it read that a black millionaire dies in Louisville. So That's amazing. Generally speaking, most people are going to come in and do this, but you want a low angle and you also are going to get better compaction in the corner of the shovel. Before funeral homes existed yeah. and folks would die and they had the visitation in home, when they would bring them to the cemetery, if the ground was frozen and they couldn't bury them, they would bring them to this wake house. And if you look inside, you'll see there's shelving and that's where they would put the bodies while they were waiting to be buried. But this was built around the 1890s and it was, the architects were Loomis and Clark. They are actually a very famous set of architects that worked here in Louisville back in the time. So the fact that they did this building is very prominent. Tablet stones tends to break easily. Most common place for them to break would be right where they meet the base. It's been in disrepair, and the Friends of Eastern Cemetery have applied for a couple of grants from the Kentucky Colonels over the last couple of years, and we had the whole building retuck pointed on the inside and the outside, so it's almost like brand new again. Marble tends to get hairline cracks, sometimes fractures. Through freeze-thaw cycles and expansion and contraction, sometimes marble changes. What you've got is an above ground structure with open windows, let's call it. Um, that one is a below ground built into a slope. So you've got earthen material around it and then sort of a cave-like structure and they brought in a river ice. So in the winter time, what would happen is you'd have bodies that couldn't go in ground because the ground was frozen. Now, most epoxies, you're going to see a color change because uh, the two components are going to be slightly different. And so it'll be like an unmixed cake batter. If you overmix and you keep doing this a long time, it'll start to make it set quicker because you'll be aerating it. We leveled it, see? I mean, it's basically there. So we'll get it to seed itself a little bit, meaning that low down, I'm going to just go back and forth a little. And we're gonna go below the break with one and above the break with another one, and we're all good.